government unveils the largest budget in country's history. Almost 10 million households to receive direct cash in. Hello and good evening. I'm Mohan Priya. Welcome to News at 10's Budget 2022 Special Edition. With me in the studio today is my colleague Brendan Lipal and a special guest Dr. Shankar Nambiar, Senior Research Fellow of the Malaysian Institute of Economic Research, MIER. In line with spirit of Keluarga Malaysia, which emphasizes on inclusiveness, togetherness and gratitude, the government has announced yet another record high budget with 332.1 billion ringgit for 2022 to cement the country's recovery. Unveiled by Finance Minister Tunku Dato Sri Zafrul Tunku Abdul Aziz in Parliament today, the budget supports three main pillars, strengthening recovery, building resilience and driving innovation. The budget's amount, equivalent to 20.3% of the gross domestic product, is nearly 3% larger than the 322.5 billion ringgit announced for budget 2021. Dari jumlah tersebut, kerajaan bercadang untuk menyediakan 233.5 billion ringgit bagi belanja mengurus, 75.6 billion ringgit untuk belanja pembangunan, dan 23 billion ringgit di bawah kumpulan wang COVID-19. Sejumlah 2 bilion ringgit turut disediakan sebagai simpanan luar jangka. Budget 2022 continues with three main areas of focus: the rakyat's well-being, competitive businesses, and prosperous and sustainable economy. Now the government has also announced another direct cash aid scheme for Malaysian households known as the Bantuan Keluarga Malaysia BKM scheme. It is an improvement to the Bantuan Prihatin Rakyat and is expected to help 9.6 million households with an allocation of 8.2 billion ringgit. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul explains that families with up to three children and monthly income of 2,500 ringgit or less will get 2,000 ringgit. Kerajaan juga akan memberi bantuan tambahan sebanyak RM500 lagi kepada ibu atau bapa tunggal yang mempunyai anak tanggungan dan berpendapatan bulanan sehingga RM5,000. Selain itu, bantuan tambahan sebanyak RM300 lagi turut diberikan kepada isi rumah warga emas. Ini bermakna kepada ibu atau bapa tunggal dengan tiga anak atau lebih layak mendapat BKM maksimum sebanyak RM2,500. Furthermore, the Social Welfare Department will also get an allocation of 200 million ringgit to help the needy. Thank you so much, Mohana. And uh, to dive in deeper, Budget 2022, and get a better understanding on how this budget can holistically help the economy of Malaysia. Together with me in the studio once again, Dr. Shankar Nambia. Thank you so much for being here, Doctor. Great right. pleasure. Thank, thanks for inviting me. Getting the ball rolling right now with such a large allocation of uh, 332.1 billion ringgit. Some would say it's the largest, uh, one of the largest. It is the largest in history. So the government also projects a reduced fiscal deficit for 2022 to 6% of GDP compared to 6.5% in 2021. In this, uh, is this achievable given the current pandemic situation, Doctor? I think it's... Uh indication of the kind of confidence that the government has uh, in the way the economy will recover. Uh, I think we looking forward to uh, fairly good rates of growth in, in the uh, months ahead and, and uh, into 2022. 20, uh, right. So I think uh, given that kind of an optimistic scenario, I think it's uh, uh, not out of place to expect uh, the deficit to reduce because uh, you'll find that your GDP is increasing and I think that will go uh, quite a long way towards achieving the kind of target that, uh, that the uh, Minister of Finance has. Right. 
Okay. Now, with the focus on education, health, recoveries of SMEs and uh, the people's well-being, among others, which part of the 2022 budget and uh, part of it also has the wow factor. Now, to help achieve the government's target of boosting the country's economy and development of the people, how does this come into play? I think you have here a very um, com comprehensive kind of budget. As, as you have mentioned, that there are various um, uh, crucial elements which affect people on a day-to-day -day basis, and all of them have been uh, taken into account. So it's uh, just not, I think, one particular um, uh, element or aspect which contributes to the wow factor. It's the fact that it has been crafted in such a way as to take into account everything that affects uh, lives of people that give the, this particular budget its, uh, its, its uh, characteristic flavor. Right. Okay, thank you so much, Doctor. We will come back to you. But right now, the second largest allocation has been granted to the Health Ministry. Mohana has more. In prioritizing public health care to build national resilience in preparation for the endemic phase of COVID-19, now, the government has allocated 32.4 billion ringgit to the health ministry for operating and development expenditure. Now, the allocation is the second largest in budget 2022 after the education ministry, reflecting the government's concern for the people's well-being. Selepas Kementerian Pendidikan, peperangan kita dengan pandemik COVID-19 ini masih belum berakhir. Oleh itu, tambahan 4 billion ringgit disediakan khusus untuk meneruskan agenda menangani COVID-19 yang merangkumi dua bilion ringgit bagi membiayai program vaksinasi. Manakala dua bilion ringgit lagi disediakan bagi meningkatkan kapasiti fasiliti perkhidmatan kesihatan awam seperti pembelian bekalan ubat, bahan guna habis, PPE dan dan kit kesihatan. The government would continue to strengthen the COVID-19 national immunization program to provide booster doses to adults, as well as continuing vaccination to adolescents aged 12 to 17. Kerajaan telah mendandatangani perjanjian untuk mendapatkan 88 juta dos, iaitu bersamaan lebih 140% penduduk dan cukup untuk memberi dos ketiga kepada semua penduduk berusia 12 tahun dan ke atas. On another development, Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul said the government had agreed to extend the appointment by contract of more than 10,000 medical, dental and pharmaceutical officers after their two-year compulsory service to a maximum of four years to ensure continuity in service and to prepare them for specialist studies. Sebagai tambahan, sukacita diumumkan kerajaan bersetuju meluluskan penajaan program kepakaran dengan peruntukan 100 juta ringgit untuk manfaat 3,000 pegawai kontrak perubatan dan pergigian. The minister added 70 million ringgit has also been allocated to ensure continued emphasis on mental health issues, including strengthening support, counselling and psychology services, increasing advocacy programmes and boosting the role of NGOs as movers of mental health programmes. Doctor, we have to come back to you. Whenever uh, we talk about allocation, there's always a concern right here whether it's enough or on the contrary. So with the second largest in budget 2022 after education, reflecting the government's concern for the people's well-being, do you feel that it is enough since COVID-19 is far from over and uh, it's a worldwide pandemic with all the new variants turning up almost every few weeks? Uh, I think the health sector has been ignored and it perhaps has been ignored for far too long. Uh, the pandemic has uh, highlighted the fault lines and I, I think uh, um, I would see this as very positive in, in the sense that the government is uh, uh, recognizing the fact that a lot more has to be done and I see this as a, a, a very positive uh, first step in, in that direction. So I, I uh, certainly think it's something that uh, um, is definitely welcome. And, and looking at the kinds of uh, uh, measures that are being made available uh, and uh, uh, the attempt to reach out to uh, poorer sections of uh, society, I, I think it's uh, 
definitely very uh, commendable. And I just hope that uh, the momentum is, is maintained and, and the, uh, the importance that should be accorded for health uh, keeps getting the attention it deserves. Right, Doctor, when we come, uh, when, it, when you mention momentum, is there any sort of room for improvement when we're talking about momentum reaching out to the public in this particular field? Uh, definitely. I, I think uh, um, especially for those who depend on uh, public health care, uh, the, the, the facilities uh, should definitely be improved. I mean, uh, th there are some very um, uh, simple indicators. If you went to a public ho uh, hospital, the length of time you would have to wait, etc. The, the, uh, uh, the, the kind of, uh, if you looked at it on the, uh, from the, the, the uh, side of the staff, the kind of uh, pressure that they are under. I think all of this has to be uh, taken into account. You have to pay cognizance to it. And uh, uh, there definitely is a lot of scope for improvement. Uh, and, and also, I, I think another aspect which uh, deserves attention, aside from the, uh, the hardware, the, 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 the availability of beds, buildings, etc., I think uh, uh, given the fact that the cost of healthcare is increasing, the burden um, both for uh, patients as well as uh, for the system is, is increasing. Uh, you need to put in place a comprehensive health financing scheme. Uh, I think that that is a matter of uh, priority going forward. Right, right, right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Now, moving forward also as well, the government has one billion ringgit allocation for education sector. Mohana will tell us more. That's right, Brendan. The education sector continues to receive the highest amount of allocation in Budget 2022 with 52.6 billion ringgit for the Education Ministry and 14.5 billion ringgit for the Higher Education Ministry. Now, Tengku Dato Sri Zafrul said the budget retains education as the top priority in the country's expenditure. The government will provide 1 billion ringgit for the purpose of repairing and maintenance of school structures. This includes 140 million ringgit for the Department of Islamic Development Malaysia, JAKIM, a significant increase compared to 100,000 ringgit in 2021 to maintain Tafis schools, religious schools and pondok schools. 120 million ringgit was also allocated for 1,800 Chinese primary schools and Tamil primary schools for 2022. The government will also facilitate those requiring electronic apparatus for online learning. Kerajaan dengan kerjasama syarikat telekomunikasi terpilih akan melaksanakan inisiatif peranti siswa keluarga Malaysia bagi membekalkan sebuah tablet kepada setiap pelajar B40 di institusi pengajian tinggi. Bagi tujuan ini, kerajaan akan menyediakan peruntukan 450 juta ringgit di samping komitmen syarikat telekomunikasi yang turut menyumbang kira-kira 65 juta ringgit. InsyaAllah, seramai 600,000 siswa-siswi daripada keluarga B40 bakal menerima manfaat daripada inisiatif ini. Meanwhile, the government will offer discounts for repayment of National Higher Education Fund Corporation or PTPTN loans. Kerajaan bersetuju memberikan diskaun bayaran balik pinjaman PTPTN bermula 1 November 2021 hinggalah 30 April 2022 seperti berikut. Pertama, diskaun 15% atas baki hutang untuk penyelesaian penuh pinjaman. Kedua, diskaun 12% untuk bayaran sekurang-kurangnya 50% daripada baki hutang dalam sekali bayaran. Dan ketiga, diskaun 10% untuk bayaran balik melalui potongan gaji atau debit terus mengikut jadual. The government has also identified technical and vocational education and training TIVET as a driving force in fulfilling the country's skilled labour demands. As such, 6.6 .6 billion ringgit will be provided for various initiatives under the relevant ministries and agencies. 
Now, the core concept of Rakyat Yang Sejahtera, or people's well-being, also covers the whole of nation approach guided by the Keluarga Malaysia idea, where all sectors of society, including the vulnerable groups, the disabled, women and children, as well as those affected by unemployment, will receive aid and support from the government. Untuk itu, sejumlah 11.4 bilion ringgit disediakan bagi melaksanakan pelbagai inisiatif di bawah payung pembangunan Bumi Putra. Sebanyak 200 juta ringgit turut disediakan khusus untuk kaum Cina. Peruntukan ini antaranya untuk melaksanakan program Baik Pulih Rumah dan Kemajuan Kampung Baru. Bagi kaum India pula, sebanyak 145 juta ringgit disediakan antaranya untuk melaksanakan program memperkasa sosio ekonomi komuniti India di bawah unit transformasi masyarakat India dan dana pembiayaan di bawah skim pembangunan usahawan masyarakat India oleh Tekun. Kepada komuniti orang asli pula, sebanyak 274 juta ringgit diperuntukkan. Antaranya bagi melaksanakan program peningkatan taraf hidup orang asli seperti pemberian subsidi dan bantuan persekolahan serta bantuan kebajikan untuk manfaat hampir 200 ribu orang asli. Meanwhile, in an effort to help the people create conducive living conditions, the government will focus to reduce living cost, encourage home ownership, ease access to public transportation, develop rural infrastructure, as well as enhance national security and public safety. Kerajaan menyediakan lebih 31 bilion ringgit khusus untuk subsidi, bantuan dan insentif bagi bajet 2022. Perutukan ini adalah untuk meminimum Kesan peningkatan kos hari hidup rakyat melibatkan kawalan harga barang dan perkhidmatan. Kemakmuran ekonomi tidak akan tercapai tanpa negara yang aman dan damai. Bagi tahun harapan, bajet ini menyediakan peruntukan kepada Kementerian Pertahanan dan Kementerian Dalam Negeri masing-masing sebanyak 16 bilion dan 17 bilion ringgit. All right, Doctor, coming back to you, um, to reduce living costs, you know, some would argue that it would not spur economic recovery. Will it or will it not? Um, I think uh, you do need to attend to the question of reducing the living cost. Uh, it's something that plagues uh, large sections of, of the population, of course, B40. But uh, I think during the, the uh, COVID period, uh, with a lot of closures, uh, uh, people not, uh, businesses um, not being able to function as they used to pre-COVID, it's, it's also uh, tightened the noose around the uh, M40. Uh, uh, things have been very difficult for the M40. And uh, therefore, I think it's, it's only reasonable, sensible that attention be paid to improving the, the, the uh, standard of living, trying to bring them back to where they were pre-pandemic. And I think in, in the process of doing that, um, uh, as demand is, is created, that there's more demand, uh, you would automatically have to meet that demand and, and that would spur uh, economic activity. That would also give more opportunities for companies to respond and, and pick up on, on uh, uh, the increasing demand. So, for instance, you, you find that, that there is this attempt to improve mm -hmm. um, uh, um, uh, affordable housing, for right. instance, and, and that creates the, uh, the kind of uh, uh, demand that you would like to see from the side of uh, uh, those in, in the construction industry, for instance. And um, then you have uh, the multiply effect at, at work. That, that it's not just the contractors, but uh, all those other companies that are associated with them, the kind of um, increase in demand that you would find. And uh, all of that would um, go to creating a more vibrant economy, although it, it all starts off with, with trying to improve um, the, the standard of, of living or, or well-being of people. Right. Thank you so much, Doctor. Now, uh, you've mentioned the B40 and the M40 as well. As well. Now, they are the most affected by COVID-19. And uh, the micro and small medium entrepreneurs, they are part of this particular group. So will this budget address these issues effectively? I think uh, the budget does pay uh, some um, 
attention to the uh, SME sector, the uh, MSME uh, sector. Right. Um, it, it, it's come out with uh, innovative ways of, of uh, funding the sector. It's uh, looked at new ways in which um, recovery could be uh, spurred. Uh, the, uh, uh, attempts are, are made to um, uh, figure out ways in which uh, funding uh, could be made available, addressing issues relating to the kind of gearing and uh, leveraging problems they have. And uh, uh, I think that um, is a very important part of uh, uh, the kind of assistance that the SME sector needs. Right. But uh, if you ask me whether um, that is all that it needs, right. perhaps not. Right. And, and perhaps uh, uh, more could be done for the SME sector. But I suppose there are constraints. I mean, this sector, uh, this uh, budget in particular, uh, the, the, the scope has been very wide. They've tried to cover as, as many areas as possible, as many segments of the population as possible. And uh, I think given these constraints, um, uh, it's very heartening to see that they've gone to the heart of the matter, which is the availability of funds for the SME sector. Right. So when it comes to uh, AIDS and uh, help being given to these SMEs, you know, knowing that you are from these particular SMEs, you're receiving this uh, help, this assistance. Is there a particular time frame that the government should look at to help these SMEs before they move on to the next SMEs? Because as you said, budget is constrained. We have all other kinds of factors coming into play. Um, I, I think, um, you yes, uh, you would be able to uh, look at it in, in some kind of a phased approach. and uh, approach. Yes. Uh, and I think um, um, there, there are some measures in, in the budget which kind of uh, look at the uh, uh, overriding f uh, uh, issues that, that cut across uh, SMEs. But I think uh, uh, you would also need to be more targeted and, and ad adopt a, a phased uh, face approach. Mm -hmm. And as you said, uh, look at particular areas that, 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 that need attention and, and, and move on. And, and in that respect, I think um, the, uh, uh, I, I see a lot of uh, uh, attention being paid, for instance, uh, to the tourism sector. And, and uh, uh, stands to reason why that should be the case, because that was a sector which was uh, severely affected during the, uh, the, the whole phase of uh, lockdown. All right. And it's interesting how you mentioned tourism because among the industries that suffered the most in the pandemic was the tourism industry. So the government has given special attention here. Mohana will tell us more. That's right. To rejuvenate economic sectors, especially the tourism industry that was gravely affected by the pandemic, more attention was given to them to allow industry players to operate at maximum capacity. Beberapa inisiatif utama dengan nilai keseluruhan 1.6 bilion ringgit akan dilaksanakan pada tahun depan merangkumi pertama pelaksanaan program subsidi upah bersasar kepada pemain industri pelancongan. Kerajaan akan meneruskan inisiatif PSU khusus kepada pengusaha pelancongan yang mengalami penurunan pendapatan sekurang-kurangnya 30%. Pembiayaan khusus bagi sektor pelancongan sebanyak 600 juta ringgit di bawah Penjana Tourism Financing dan Bank Pembangunan Rehabilitation Scheme. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul also announced a leisure tax exemption that includes theme parks and cinemas in federal territories and tourism tax exemption will be extended until 31st December 2022. Meanwhile, the government has announced a multi-billion ringgit's worth of aid to businesses in Malaysia on a road to recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic for Budget 2022. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul announced a 40 billion ringgit worth of financing package for entrepreneurs from small to big businesses for next year under the program called Samara Niaga Keluarga Malaysia. Skim pembiayaan ini merangkumi pinjaman langsung, jaminan pembiayaan, dan suntikan equity dengan sasaran untuk memanfaatkan setiap golongan usahawan tidak kira perusahaan mikro ataupun syarikat tersenarai awam. 
Other than Samara Nyaga, Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul said additional financing worth 1.8 billion ringgit will be provided through various agencies such as Tekun, Agrobank, BSN, Bank Rakyat and Bank Negara Malaysia. Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul also announced a specific initiative to help companies listed on the exchange who will also be introduced through additional funds by a government-owned SPV in the form of equity instruments or other related instruments to help companies that are viable but affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. The implementation of the National Digital Network or Jandela initiative will be intensified next year with the provision of 700 million ringgit to continue digital connectivity efforts in 47 industrial areas and 30 schools, especially in rural areas. In addition, Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul said 5G services will also be expanded next year to 36% of high-density areas, including in major towns and cities in Johor, Selangor, Pulau Pinang, Sabah and Sarawak. Penyediaan perkhidmatan 5G bakal melaka landscape teknologi baru dan menawarkan pengalaman pengguna yang lebih baik dan pantas. Di samping itu, ia juga merapatkan jurang digital antara mencipta peluang pekerjaan baru. Untuk meningkatkan penerapan digital dalam kalangan PMKS, kerajaan akan menambah baik inisiatif skim grant pendigitalan PKS. Untuk tahun 2022, jumlah dana bagi skim ini telah dinaikkan kepada 200 juta ringgit dengan 50 juta ringgit dikhususkan untuk usahawan mikro bumi putra di luar bandar. All right, Doctor, very briefly as we're running out of time. Now, given the high number of people currently unemployed, 600,000 new job opportunities will be created under a job guarantee initiative known as Jamin Kerja Keluarga Malaysia or Jamin Kerja. So what sort of guarantee are we looking at right here? I don't know if in life there is any guarantee about anything at all. Uh, having said that, I think the um, initiative is, is uh, um, really useful and uh, I, I think it, it, is, it tries to bring in uh, the, the public sector, the private sector and uh, it, it gives support to uh, companies which um, uh, uh, would, would uh, w see an increase in demand and therefore need to increase their uh, production uh, but are perhaps constrained by labour costs. And uh, I, I think the kind of uh, assistance that, that the government is, is planning to give uh, when companies uh, employ the jobless 30% um, initially and 20% and subsequently or something of that sort, I think that would um, help to reduce the cost of uh, labor as far as these com companies are concerned. And the other heartening thing is, uh, is also to see uh, the um, uh, GLCs coming into play and uh, offering uh, jobs. Now all of this might be uh, of a rather short term nature, but I think it's very hel helpful because uh, this is a phase where you want to apply uh, some kind of band-aid. It, it's uh, meant to take care of, of the short term and I think it's right. uh, very helpful in that okay. respect. All right. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us right here. And that was Dr. Shankaran Nanbia, Senior Research Fellow of Malaysian Institute of Economic Research. And thank you so much once again for being here, Doctor. Now, this was our very special edition of News at 10 with the tabling of Budget 2022. If you missed out on parts of the bulletin, do tune in to RTM Click or Saluran Berita RTM on YouTube. Thank you so much for joining me together with Warner Priya and we'll see you next time.